Hi guys, so welcome back. I'm now going to prepare the high glue for attaching the parchment to the shield board. And as you can see, we, I have already prepared um, the high glue here. High glue itself um, is a glue that has been used for millennia and is uh, still very common in woodworking and restoration. Um, it has a number of properties that divide it from modern glues. Uh, one of them is that um, it doesn't really hold up very well against humidity and it is also sensitive to heat. Now these could be considered disadvantages but at the same time it's also an advantage which is for instance used by um, builders of uh, musical instruments. If uh, for maintenance purposes you have to disassemble say an old violin, these instruments were usually glued together with height glue. Now um, because height glue is um, sensitive to heat, you can easily heat up the joints and um, without any damage to the original material, namely the wood in that case, you can um, disassemble the instrument. Another advantage of um, high glue is that it sticks to itself. So other than um, a lot of modern glues, you can put on hot high, hot and liquid hide glue onto hide glue and uh, it will create a bond. Okay, so um, if uh, you look at the hide glue here, hide glue is uh, produced from, as the name says, hide. So um, the scraps of hide are uh, boiled, slowly boiled up and um, the uh, gel that um, ultimately is um, created is then dried and cut to either sheets or, like in this case, to um, these granules. And um, uh, this can be kept on the shelf forever, um, as long as you keep the material dry. Once it is wet, um, it may be destroyed by microorganisms, so if you um, if you are left with uh, high glue, either keep it in a freezer or make sure that uh, you dry it out again before it starts to rot. When it's, once it's rotten, it is um, destroyed and uh, cannot be used again. So the granules that you see here, they are completely dry and uh, I put some um, into water for a couple of hours and what happens then is they're going to absorb um, the water and swell up, right? So that also means that as uh, high glue dries it will shrink, all right? Um, so here you see um, you see the, the watered gel-like material so this is what these granules look like if you put them in water they swell up to uh, probably four times the size and um, this stuff I kept in a jar and this jar I put into a water bath uh, and um, this pot I put onto um, a heater and now I'm going to heat it up to some 60 degrees centigrade you should not heat it up uh, any hotter than say 70 degrees centigrade or more because then the um, proteins within the glue will be destroyed and it will lose all its adhesive power. So while the glue is becoming hotter so I can uh, work it, a few words on the board. Um, a couple of people ask about um, the kind of wood that uh, was used to create that shield board. That shield board, by the way, was made by Kim Wich Glasen, um, who is a woodworker and an expert for um, reconstructing medieval replica furniture. So he's making uh, really nice replicas and um, uh, he's a friend of mine and, and I asked him to make this board from split planks. He used high glue to join um, the planks which are simply butted to each other to that purpose. Of course he had to use um, clamps to keep the boards in place and only after that 
and they were thinned down. As you have seen in the previous video, you know that I, um, in one of the previous videos, you know that um, I thinned down the board myself too. Um, after I have attached the height, all the planks will neatly be clamped together by the height, which means I can thin it down even further, which um, I will do. This is poplar wood, also known as lime wood, and um, it's a local wood that grows a lot around here. Um, it is confirmed by finds from um, various Germanic bog um, finds like Illerup and uh, Torsberg. And these finds also contain a lot of shields which were made from elder wood. Poplar or lime wood um, has some really nice properties. First of all, it's very resilient. So um, it's not so easy to cut into that material. At the same time, it is very light. So that renders it um, a very good wood for making shields. So as you can see, the glue is already molten. It has a nice temperature of exactly 60 degrees centigrade, which I measured with um, this device, which I nicked from the kitchen a long time ago. And um, now it lives in the workshop for this purpose. So with the board and height being firmly kept in place by um, this plank and the anvil, I can now fold back the height and proceed with gluing.
So this is uh, what the board looks like the next morning. The hide is firmly attached, but you can see there are a lot of uh, wrinkles here and uh, some bubbles. Um, and um, I'm wondering if, because um, the glue is sensitive to heat, if I could simply iron these um, wrinkles down. Now here are a few places where there are air bubbles and um, if I compress them a little bit I can see that it actually uh, would stick if the glue was still open, which, is, which it is not anymore. But um, yeah, I'm going to see if um, this idea uh, works out. So there are some serious bubbles here. Even here, and um, so I'm going to give this a try first. seems to work. So what's critical is you have to make sure that it doesn't get too hot because then the glue will, um, will lose all its adhesive power and strength because uh, the protein molecules would be destroyed if it was too hot. But as you can see, I still have fine wrinkles here, but uh, overall these fat bubbles, they have all gone and it seems like um, the hide is sticking nicely to the surface. Ah, very cool, I like it. So I'm very impressed with this method. Uh, this part here I have already ironed down and it's all smooth. I mean there, uh, I can still see some of the really big wrinkles and bubbles. No, I don't see any bubbles, but I see some of the wrinkles, but um, what works really nicely is heating it up and then afterwards uh, when I have heated it up uh, with uh, the iron, I use um, uh, a wooden, smooth wooden handle to compress um, the parts which needs to, need to be um, pressed down. And this is just super cool. I mean, you can, uh, what a great system. You can just um, work the glue again by heating it up. I have, of course, no idea if this was ever done in historical times. Um, Arthur von Eschen correctly pointed out that uh, this method uh, could also be used, uh, namely using heat and uh, moisture, could also be used to make repairs, right? So if, uh, say, um, you need to disassemble your shield, you can do that by, uh, heat it, by using heat and maybe some steam to loosen up the glue. What I'm doing here is I loosen up the glue, um, make it open again, um, because I want it to stick again, right? So with my hand I can feel which parts are hot and then I'm going to use, now I'm going to basically polish these parts pressing the height onto the board and polishing out any wrinkles. And you can see they simply disappear. Okay, three hours of smoothening the surface and here it is. No more wrinkles at all. I put the boss into the center so you have uh, some sense of proportion and um, here's our nice even height facing. No more wrinkles at all.